out who we are, let's just hook the leg, right? Camping at Hooker Lake tonight. I'm testing out some new, new equipment. One thing I haven't got though is micro spikes, which is um, really annoying. Yeah, so this is the second bridge right now. Real easy track, probably one of the easiest tracks in New Zealand. But I, really, I think it's better walking it now in the evening. Um, absolutely no people here, you know. Uh, just rabbits and possums, that's it. And then we'll figure out the camp a bit later. Have a hearty feed. Yeah, we've just hit the uh, five minute marker for the Hooker Lake. So we're gonna come up the top here. This is the view lookout. Uh, obviously you can't see much tonight. Way too dark, just a possum just ran off. And we're just gonna walk down here to the lakefront. Yeah, extreme cold, three degrees, surge wave, ice can carve off glacier and create a large wave, thin ice. Okay, so that is actually something to think about. You know, for a chunk of glacier to break off that's so big, it creates a tidal surge. Like, that would have to be a huge piece of ice. Like, ginormous. And the fact that the glacier is actually quite far uh, from this, this side of the lake, I think, honestly, we're going to be safe. Not too concerned at all. And I never actually even thought about that as a danger. So that's definitely something to consider. I, you know, you learn something every day. So that's the edge of the lake. Uh, almost looks like a bloody walk on it, it's that cold. Frozen. Massive iceberg over there, you probably can't quite see that. This should be perfect, nice and flat. There's no wind tonight at all. And yeah, we've got the perfect, perfect sunrise view. The lake's right here. Iceberg's like right there. Um, it's a bit down, so there's a bit of, um, bit of space between me and the water. My tent's not a full season, it's three. Three plus, so just want to try and protect it as much as I can. The amount of room I need with my thermal mat, roughly. Uh, so that's definitely big enough for that. Now we'll chuck the tent down. It's an important bit of kit. Extremely important. Probably the most important. I mean, besides sleeping bag, I never feel alone when I'm camping. And especially videoing as well, you know, we can bring you guys along for the adventure, which is great. Okay, so that looks like enough space. So yeah, that's the, that's the setup there. Can all go in here, okay. Yeah, then. Gas burners are not the best for the cold, but not too bad, not too bad at all. I think in the future I'll definitely think about getting uh, like an MSR bloody, um, what do you call them, liquid, liquid fuel, they are really good. Look at that, eh? <laughs> Stag chili and mega ring. I'm happy as with that. Okay, we'll see you after this. Okay, that's the damage, done. As you can see, um, just got a bit of a light, light snow coming down. Hopefully, it just falls off, right? But I'll just keep an eye on it during the night, and there's, there's not really much I can do. I can't peg it out properly, unfortunately. In a couple of hours, it could get quite heavy. Who knows? I don't, honestly don't know. The forecast said there was going to be a bit of snow, so I've ha I anticipated this, but I didn't anticipate I couldn't get the tent pegged out properly, which is not ideal because that's really what you want in snow, a nice tight tent. Um, so I have to come up with some other solution for next time. Uh, as for now though, pretty pretty much set for bed, so took a good pano of the, uh, the lake there, the iceberg, so I'm happy with that. I'm not going to do a time lapse tonight. Current conditions outside. Light flurries.
Just sort of keeping an eye on the tent and conditions. A little bit of wind, but nothing really. Just sort of semi awake, haven't really slept much, but I'm warm enough. It's just um, keeping an eye on everything and making sure everything's fine. Just woke up. Um, a lot of snow last night, actually, probably about 10 centimetres at least. have it. The sun has come out. Now this is what I've been waiting for. It's, it's 9.30 now. Uh, just been heating up some water just to keep warm and currently got breakfast on the go. This fella come over and say hello. He's taking some photos down by the river. Another fella there doing some, some more photos. And they said they got up like real early, like before six to get out here. So good on them, honestly. And the sun is out, which is just like night and day compared to last night's snow. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll just cook this and then I guess we'll pack up and uh, yeah, go from there. Everyone's out taking selfies now. Nah, there's only about six people here. Not too bad at all, eh? Not too bad. Perfect fluffies. That's pretty much me out of here. And I gotta thank my mate Jack for lending me this shovel because I'd have been screwed without it. Everyone's seen this track um, during the day. There's a thousand videos out there. I wanted to show you it at night and uh, camp. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I found these Ray-Bans on the track as well. So if you watch this video this far and these belong to you, let me know and I'll post them back to you. Otherwise, finders keepers. So I left nothing but a bit of rough snow, and that's it. So if you're going to be a responsible camper, I suggest you do the same. Now I just got to upgrade some kit as well, so I need I need a new thermal mat if I'm going to do more adventures like this, especially on frozen ground. Because wow, the difference between a good mat and a bad one. <laughs> yeah, it makes it. The sleeping bag's fine. The sleeping bag's more than capable of managing temperature, but without a good thermal mat, you've had it. Lose so much, so much heat in the uh, in the ground. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, see you on the next one. Eh?